I would now like to um, invite one of the three authors of the following presentation. The presentation was uh, a result of cooperation between three authors, Katarina Ivan Shinkardum, Maria Cernčević, Mariana Cukrov. So I now give the floor to Katarina from the Natural History, uh, Natural History Museum of Dubrovnik. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Uh, first, I need to find my um, presentation. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Katerina Ivanishin Kardum, uh, currently a museum educator at the Dubrovnik Natural History Museum and one of the authors of the exhibition How Big Was the Tuna in Our Museum. Um, the animation clip you're watching is a short version of one of the central elements of the exhibition which describes in an easily comprehensible way the movement of tuna spindle body in its natural environment. Um, the Dubrovnik Natural History Museum reopened in a new space in 2009 after being closed for over two decades. Currently, the museum doesn't have a permanent exhibition. By large, the collections on show are preparations made at the turn of the 19th and the 20th century and are the records of the biodiversity of the Dubrovnik region at the time. Um, the fact that the museum was closed for such a long time meant that practically it was wiped out of the memory of the local citizens and there was a need to reanimate the public. So the objective was to provoke interest in the local community for this valuable collection. Uh, you're looking at one side of the exhibition leaflet. Uh, two years of scientific research preceded the exhibition. During those two years, the workshops were held, the participants being um, the high school children, whose contribution was essential in the exhibition setup, but also in re reaching of that goal of the popularization of both the institution and of the natural history. Uh, the exhibition is installed in four rooms on the entire second floor of the museum building. Uh, you can read what Spiridon Brusina, one of the most important Croatian natural historians, wrote in 1905 about a museum object, object that is still in the museum collection today. Um, and finally, uh, here you see that valuable natural object he wrote about, um, and the head as well as the caudal fin of an enormous tuna which was caught in Maliston Bay in 1897, which is in the vicinity of Dubrovnik. By looking at those objects in flesh, one can guess the size of the fish, but obviously the body part is missing, and we can also guess why. Uh, precisely that missing part is the core of the story I'm about to tell. I do not intend to describe the exhibition, uh, but I want to tell you about the process uh, to give you an insight into the um, process of making it. Um, I put this artwork by Damien Hirst, I'm sure a lot of you know of his work, uh, displayed at the Tate Britain in the early 90s. Uh, in my opinion, it's a good example of how putting of an object into a surprising context gives it a completely new meaning and emphasizes the fact that museum objects are also carriers of uh, cultural information. In our workshop held at the museum, we did somewhat the opposite. We used um, art methods and techniques uh, to reconstruct the scientific facts. Uh, so first we started with 2D drawings. Uh, we started off with drawing, an approach and a method that would have been very common to a scientist of over 100 years ago and before. This drawing is not one of our workshop drawings. It's a drawing I saw at the Science Museum in London. It's by Pixar Studios. And it was made from nature observation, but for the purposes of making the animation film Finding Nemo. And this is a drawing from one of our workshops in a scale of one to 10 of the tuna from our museum. It is based on the scientific data of the dimensions estimated on the basis of morphometric characteristics, the diameter of the eye, the length of the head, etc. And this finally is a drawing in a scale one to one, which our uh, workshop participants did, and it's in the exhibition display. Um, the drawing uh, was obviously also made by them, and it uh, illustrates how the scientific data was given physical shape. The next was how to make from those drawings, um, the most, more, more complex step was to turn those 2D depictions into 3D models. 
um, simple and an inexpensive way was to recycle cardboard boxes. Here are the models in scale 1 to 10 in the exhibition displayed, more than 50 of them hanging from the ceiling, illustrating the tuna move in school, um, moving in schools, again made in workshops. Um, the visitors can make their own cardboard model of the fish in one of the exhibition spaces set aside for this purpose. Uh, for this, purpose. this aspect is very much appreciated by the tourists in Dubrovnik because it's such a busy city. It gives them a contemplative place where they can do something, have a rest, and also they can take away a souvenir they made by themselves. Up to now, over 200 such models have left the museum. Uh, the one-to-one -one model was made in co collaboration with a 3D modeling studio and a small factory that makes uh, ships. Uh, I was really impressed by this machine uh, that cuts layers of styrofoam, later glued to form the body of tuna, uh, lying here as if on the surgery. Uh, table, and you can see it here in the exhibition setup, the model is installed next to the original museum objects. Um, movement, so that was the next step. Uh, you're viewing a visual of the poster presented in Venice at a congress in 2009, where for the first time the scientific data, the estimated dimensions of the tuna uh, from our museum were presented. Um, which was the first step in this project. Um, almost two years from then, we came to the last step, technically probably the most demanding, how to present the movement of this fish to our um, exhibition visitors. And so these are uh, the animation clip you saw at the beginning. Uh, this presentation was made, like almost all the other aspects in this exhibition, by voluntary work. Um, so uh, this was made by an animation student, uh, creating those, uh, using those drawings we made in the workshops and cardboard models. Perhaps, um, let me just see, if I, okay, come to the opening. Uh, this is the um, work in progress uh, sample of the invitation card. The exhibition was opened on the 17th of May, uh, so the evening prior to the International Museum Day. Uh, it was attended by numerous audience of Dubrovnik, which was in large a consequence of the fact that we uh, all the time had the workshops present in the media for two years and on the national television as well. Uh, the title of the article, one of the articles published after the night of the opening reads, they know how to attract the citizens, the children in particular. I would say that this is the most fun part of the exhibition. Uh, it's a contour drawing in one-to-one -one scale of tuna on a panel, again done in the workshops. It's possible to compare one's height uh, with the length of the tuna from the museum by marking it on a panel. Um, the panel became a platform for messages, and in the most direct way, uh, this element of the exhibition answers the question from the title of the exhibition, how big was the tuna in our museum? Uh, by the way, my colleague is very tall. The tuna was uh, 260 centimeters in length, but she's very tall. Um, an element of the exhibition are also the copies of three scientific works from the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, uh, where Baldo Kosic, the author, describes the tuna from our museum, as well as other aspects relating to the uh, tuna as a species in the region. These works emphasize the cultural value of the museum's natural collection in uh, many instances. This is Baldo Kostic, a great enthusiast, a talented science, scientist, a curator, an artist, a kind of polymath, a man who all those years ago prepared those museum objects, the head and the caudal fin of the tuna, uh, as well as almost all the other objects in our collection. People like him, who founded our museum in 1872, uh, were great enthusiasts, and I hope that our exhibition reflected a bit of that enthusiasm uh, by also making a small cultural progress in the city of Dubrovnik, which is quite small and remote. Uh, the last slide is, uh, shows myself dressed up impersonating Baldo Kosic. Uh, I was trained as an artist, but also did stud study uh, special effects makeup for theater and television which I very much used uh, on the, we started this on the museum night this year. It was also another event by which we wanted to sort of build up this um, enthusi this kind of uh, atmosphere towards the opening of our exhibition. Uh, if I just may, one, do I have one more second?
second, I wanted to say that his writings, he was such an amazing person for a city, and his writings are now uh, an inspiration to the next exhibition we are doing, because he wrote a lot about this uh, giant leatherback sea turtle, the detail on its shield. He didn't trust what the fishermen told him about uh, how this turtle died, and it's very, very interesting, and we're going to do a reconstruction of that in a modern way. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.